In this video series, we are going to learn about validation controls in ASP.NET. So first let us understand what are validation controls. Validation controls are used to validate the form fields for valid data when it is submitted to the server. And that validation can be for a mandatory data to be entered or it can be a format of the data to be entered uh, to, uh, into the text box or it can be a, a particular a pattern of the data that should be entered uh, into the text box in order to submit to the server. And there are uh, five basically main type of validation control and one is validation summary control that basically gives us the summary and uh, but primarily we are going to focus on the first five uh, validation controls of ASP.NET so, and they are required field validator, range validator, compare validator, regular expression validator, custom validator and validation summary. We are going to learn all of them one by one. So in this series first let us learn about required field validator. As the name suggests required field validator is used to check if any field of the data is mandatory or not. If it is a mandatory then it will basically force the user to enter some data into that field. So uh, first let us learn here that how to validate a text box as a mandatory field. Okay, so let me show you that example. So uh, for that purpose I have created one form here. So let me just copy paste the ASPX code here and then I will explain them clearly. Because there is nothing into the code behind so just I am going to remove all the course that is here till now. let me remove this as well fine so I don't have anything to the code behind and uh, here is my uh, required field validator as you can see and I have one A ASP button as well and so let me just explain them from the beginning first we have username and I have a text box called its ID is txt username and my purpose is that I want to make this text box as a mandatory for the user so that if user want to submit that then he must enter something into this text box. So for that purpose either we can use the JavaScript or we can simply use the ASP.NET validation, uh, validation, uh, validation controls and in that we will use required field validator. So I have here used ASP required field validator ID equal to whatever ID we want to put and then run it equal to server and error message. Error message is nothing but the message that you want to display in case this validation is failing. So if user will not enter anything then this error message will appear. And then for color equal to red and control to validate equal to txt username. It means that I am attaching this required field validator with this text box control. That's why I have written control to validate equal to txt username. And this is simply button control. So in this button uh, control what we have done is that we have uh, written that when this button will be clicked then fire the submit data server side method. So let me write the service submit data server side method so that it will not throw error if I will run this page. Object sender event urges. That's fine. Now when I will run this page you will see that uh, I will have one browser with username and then submit. This asterisk mark is coming because I had written asterisk mark here. Now let me click on submit. When I will click, on, I am clicking on the submit. You can see that it is coming mandatory. And this mandatory text is appearing because I had written error message equal to mandatory here. Now when I will write something here, then you will see that, for example, let me write S H E O, and when I will click, then form is being submitted. Now let us run. Uh, let us write some code here where data is equal to txt username dot text. And then we will write response dot write data. Now what will happen when I will click on this button? And if I have written, if I have not written something, then it will naturally throw an error, mandatory. And if I am writing something here and clicking on submit, then you can see that the submit data method fires and it basically writes the data from the text box on the page. So this is the use of uh, required field validator. This is very very frequently used in most of the uh, forms on the websites. If you see, there are a couple of fields. For example, username, password, 
first name last name email id those are mandatory field so, and uh, in if that uh, website is built in asp.net they basically use this asp.net required field validator control in order to validate for the mandatory fields just now we saw that how to validate a text box for that mandatory and in this how to we are going to learn that how to validate a drop down list or list box as a mandatory field okay let me show you with, with this example here so here you can see that on the ASPX page I have a drop down I do not have any text box here but I have a drop down so let me uh, format it out and here you can see that in this drop down we have select age and the first item of this drop down is select age okay and I want user to start select uh, selecting from these remaining items I don't want user to select zero okay so for, for that what we need to do is that we need to write required field validator control to validate will be naturally drop down age because the drop down id is drop down age so I am just attaching this required field validator to this drop down in, uh, write the initial value so here the initial value the, the value of the first item is zero so what will happen is that when we will click on the submit button it will check for the initial value of the drop down if initial value is zero means it will assume that this particular drop down uh, uh, ha has not been selected properly so it this required field validator will basically fail and it will show this please select age error and if user has selected any of the item from this these four then actually this required field validator will pass because user has selected some item item from here and it will it will allow to submit the data on the server so let me run this page first let me close the earlier browser and here I am running now here okay it is saying that there is no data here so just let me right instead of txt I am writing drop down is dot selected value fine because this is what the submit data method is and I am just modifying it now notice that it is select is right now when I will click submit then you will see that it is uh, uh, showing me error say then please select age this error is coming of the required field validator now when I will uh, select any age here and then click submit it then you will see that my data is coming back on the page because of this submit data method now in, in, in the next how to we are going to learn that what is cause uh, validation property of the form controls and how to avoid validation on clicking of a button currently what was happening is that let me just uh, show you the difference so on this page on the earlier page I was kick, I am going to keep one more button here ASP button ID equal to something runner equal to and uh, text equal to let me write another button now what is happening is that even if I am clicking another button you can see that please select age is coming means this validation control is, is executing and it is failing so it is not allowing me to submit the data but what if I want two or three buttons a similar kind of buttons on the page and I want only uh, uh, my validation control to execute when I am clicking on the submit button this might be scenario on, on your on your pages where you have to put four or five buttons and only one button uh, will basically submit the data on the server so that all the required field validators and all the validation control should fire on click of that submit button only because all the other remaining buttons are for different different purposes so in that kind of scenario what you can do is that you can follow this approach and this what I'm going to do is that let me first copy and paste the code and then I will explain them so here is my uh, code as you can see let me just uh, format the selection and uh, yes yes and here it goes now here you will notice that I have one username text uh, text box txt username and uh, the first required field validator is attached with this txt username text box you can see here 
and the second text box is basically password and the second text box is attached with the second required field validator, field validator you can see here txt password txt password and then we have two button the first button is the login button and clicking on that we are basically executing the submit data server side method as you can see here i have written here let me just remove all of them because that is not needed and and i have another button also and on click of this what we have done is that we are writing do something else server side method so let me just create one more method here do something else okay now what i want is that i want this required few validators to execute only when i am clicking the login button when i am clicking the do something else button i don't want this required validator to execute so in that case what we can do is that we can write cause validation property to false we can set the cause validation property to false that will basically uh, restrict this particular button to fire the required field validator on this page so let me show you that let me close this let me click on view in browser and here you can see the two button, uh, buttons are there when I am clicking login then it is firing the required field validators and I am able to enter something and then clicking on the button now if I will let me go back yeah now if I will click do something you will notice that this method will fire response dot write clicked on do something you will notice that the the second this do something else method will fire and it will not even check for the required for later see here do click on do something so using couch validation uh, property of the button control we can restrict the button to f execute the uh, validation controls on the page 